He's winning. You listen to your Mickey Mouse polls? Sheriff <laughs> Joe Arpaio doesn't believe the Mickey Mouse polls showing Donald Trump is in a dead heat with Hillary Clinton here in Arizona. But you know, a lot of voters have problems with the polls. So how do you separate the good polls from the junk polls? Joining us is Michael O'Neill of Tempe-based O'Neill Associates Public Opinion Research, a national firm with 35 years of polling experience. You got to chuckle out of that quote. <laughs> yeah, I chuckle because in the old days, years ago, when Joe was running 90% in the polls, he used to call me up personally to tell me how great our polls were. But that was in the days when he had 90% approval. And he's not there anymore. <laughs> no. <laughs> and his opinion of polls, you see, has sort of gone down with his own numbers. So the poll of Joe Arpaio on the polls. Uh, without preparing us for a PhD in opinion research, uh -huh. uh, give us the three things for you that are, say, red flags when you look at a poll and make you go, hmm. The, well, the worst possible thing is where respondents are self-selected. Anything that starts out, call into this number or go to this website and tell us what you think, that's the worst of all possible words. Is that online polls? Is that part any, of that? Any, anything that has self-selection in it. When a good poll starts with a pollster contacting a respondent never under any circumstances the other way around. Okay. Self-selection is death. But the gold standard is a telephone survey which includes a cell phone sample and it has repeated calls to non-respondents because the people who are easy to reach are different from from people who are less uh, easy to reach and and that requires expertise and it requires a great deal of effort you can't do it right on the cheap so right now you're seeing places uh, sites like 538.com the upshot which yep. take averages of these polls yep. which apply a special sauce to the polls yep. and they're a mix of methodologies yeah. like online polls yeah. the self-selecting ones you don't like sometimes they get the survey sample they don't have self-selected in there no they well they, well they use the online they polls. use they, they have well there are two people are doing online stuff and they're doing model online and self-selection there's still some online people that are experimenting with that but they still involve outreach to from so, the researcher to the response. So how much should we trust that special sauce yeah. they put on that says, okay, Donald Trump has a 64% yeah. chance of winning Arizona. That's what the upshot yeah. now says. Uh, essentially, they model. They take into account the quality of the poll. They take into account house effects. Some lean one way or another. They take into account the track record of the firm, the recency of the poll. Uh, the good ones incorporate things like if there's a, a poll in Pennsylvania and it shows a big Hillary jump, that might have some presumed to have some effect on Ohio, particularly if I, Ohio has not had a recent poll. The track record of those, Nate Silver, if you want to use 538 as an example, he got 49, 49 out of 50 correct in 08, 50 out of 50 in 2012. That uh, doesn't didn't, didn't do so well in the primaries this year, did he? The primary polling's a lot harder. Okay. And I'm, I, by the way, I don't mean to say that this is necessarily afraid. The track record's pretty good. But uh, there are more and more polls out there, and more and more, higher and higher percentage of them are done on the cheap, robo-polls by machines. Those are very, very questionable. So, Do, do you trust, think, you like those projections by 538 and the upshot? Yeah, it's what, they, they're sort of the best you have. They're, they're less than totally perfect. And where they are not, you see right now, as we pointed when we were discussing, the different aggregators have somewhat different calls for Arizona. That's because we're virtually a toss-up. When it goes to 80 or 90% probability, there's a, a, a high degree of convergence. When you have something, as you approach being a total toss-up, then the slight differences in modeling statistics can have an impact. And basically, you look, I look at all of them, and if they're divergent, you probably don't know what, what the results are. Okay, the national polls. This past week, they mm -hmm. showed Hillary Clinton with a lead ranging from one point yeah. to 14 points. Right. Again, what should I believe? I believe the average, which is seven. <laughs> <laughs> and that's not just the two extremes. That's the average of all of the polls that are done. You know, there's this plus or minus around the polls, even if they're well done. A couple of them that are out there have methodological issues. But for the most part, among well done polls, you expect a kind of a, that bell curve. You know, you expect most in the middle and a few trailing. If you look at the extreme on either side, either one of those is l unlikely to be true. But the averages have proven to be reasonably resilient and by the way I don't mean to say that you're never gonna have a case where the polls are off I mean there's things that could produce that but generally speaking the track record if you average all the polls a lot better than any one poll all right we're gonna come back in just a minute we're gonna break down the Arizona polls showing Trump and Clinton are tied stay with us